I really like challenging games. I enjoy hardcore RL craft, Dark Souls 1, 2, 3, and Elden Ring, and Realm of the Mad God. But one thing Minecraft has really never had going in it for me is difficulty. And I don't mean difficulty as in a 20 to 40 hour AFK grind to get a specific resource so I can cheese my way through a certain portion of the game and switch versions to get to the Ender Dragon. I mean actual interactive difficulty. Since I've already beat hardcore RL craft, I wanted to know if I could make regular old Minecraft more difficult than its hardest mods. Which is why I decided I'd beat the game in hardcore with one heart, only to find out someone's already done that. So then I decided I'll beat the game in hardcore with one inventory slot, only to figure out someone's already done that too. It feels like someone has already thought of everything for this game. So then I was like, has anyone beat the game with one heart and one inventory slot? Ugh. Wait, no. That's just a clickbaity thumbnail. Awesome, we've got our challenge. Except I want to make it harder than this. In addition to just having one health and one inventory slot, I'm also going to make so I can't use a bow and I have to beat it in hardcore. And when I say no bow, I mean like no snowballs, no eggs, no dispensers shooting arrows, etc. And the same goes for one heart, no extra hearts. Okay, this is perfect. Let's do this. What? I died to that? This is maybe a bit harder than I thought it would be. At the start of each of the hardcore worlds, I would have to open to land temporarily so that I could set my max health to two, which is just one heart, and so that I could use a mod that I downloaded that adds commands to set my inventory max to one and my hotbar max to one. Doing this gives me one heart and one inventory slot that I cannot change during the entire run. I considered also disabling the offhand slot, but considering the fact that that would just double the time of the run and not add that much difficulty compared to what we already have, I decided against it. Once that was all set up, I would just relaunch the game so that there's no cheats and try out my run. Ooh, sheepies. If I could just find a way off this tree, once I got wool, I can get some wood and then drop the wool so that when I'm crafting with my wood, I can pick it up and make a bed and might as well take a crafting table along with me. Okay, now I just need iron for a bucket. Honestly, I really don't like the new generation for iron. I'll make my wooden pickaxe, get some stone, make a stone pickaxe, and mine some of the iron. I managed to get like 15 iron, I don't really know how much I'll need for this run. And then killed some animals, only to realize I can't really carry food on me very well. So I just ate what I had and left with my iron in my bed. Yo, that's a lot of gold. I'm gonna make some pants. Oh yeah, fully armored but still one-shottable. I found some lava and set up an absolutely hideous portal because like, I didn't really know the speedrunning strat to make portals, so I just did this. And uh, yeah, I ran back and forth, placing one obsidian at a time. I also was a genius and realized I could just get cooked meat by dropping lava buckets on these animals. And with a slice of piggy, a pickaxe, and some golden leggings, I went into the nether. Why? A soul sand valley? Okay, let's get out of here. Oh, I guess I can't really carry blocks if I have this pork chop. Honestly, compared to everything else, building a bridge isn't too scary. Too high up. MLG! Oh! I'm honestly surprised I got that. Oh, I think that's the fortress over there. Oh, but no more terrain. Honestly, I don't really mind bridging too much. Especially with this, I have these blocks above me, so like, gas or blazes won't be able to hit me. Sneaky. Sneaky. Ooh, I hear blazes. I see blazes. Okay, but how do I even fight these? If I try mining in from the side, maybe I can hit them. Punch. Okay, I really need a weapon. I went back and I got two diamond from the chest that I looted earlier and ran all the way back to my portal. What the heck, why? Okay, I guess I'm gonna come up from underneath it. It's a good thing netherrack is so easy to break with your fist. I'm a rat, I'm a rat. All right. Diamond sword time and probably some food. And I'll go back in and run back to that fortress. Ayo, let me through. Uh, stop. Oh! Oh! Okay, 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 we're good, we're good, we're good. <sighs> we'll put this blazer out in the chest and go back to that spawner. Oh! Build, build, build. Okay. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna have like a stroke or something. Another one! Okay, back to the blaze spawner. Let's kill some of these boys. Got one. Okay, no blaze rod. Okay, we got a few. Oh, I'm an idiot. 
see if I can... No, I can't really hit this guy. Maybe if I just mine this block. Oh, no! Well, that's an hour and 13 minutes of wasted time, but that's okay. We just do another. 40 minutes through and I got ganked by a wither skeleton. Okay, so let me define my goals real quick. So my thought is, for the safest run, I have three goals in the overworld, and that's just getting a bed, finding iron, and then finding a lava pool. Since the faster I get to the nether, the less risk I'm taking in the overworld, I feel like that's just one of my safest routes. In the nether, I need to get gold, find a fortress, kill some blazes, find a warped forest, and kill some endermen, and then I can just get out and make eyes of ender. Once I have the eyes of ender, all I need to do is find the stronghold, and I should be pretty much set to fight the dragon. Now, I haven't really thought of a way to kill the dragon yet, but there's probably a way with all the items in this game. Alright, so during attempt 3, I did manage to get some iron, however when I dropped it to go get some food before night, a fox freaking took it from me! I can just take all of it? Get back here! Why? I- Okay, I'm probably just gonna die. Why are these things so fast? Oh no, oh no. Uh, there goes attempt 3. On attempt four, I got fed up with trying to find iron and just died. And on the next one, I found out why you shouldn't eat food and hold lava in your offhand. But on number six, I spawned next to a lava pool. Typically, the longest part of being in the overworld was finding a lava pool, so spawning right next to one was awesome. So I went out and I got some iron, and I actually looked up how to make another portal properly this time. So I made a bucket, got some water, and... I don't know what I'm doing. You like place the dirt right there, right? And then you heck. Okay, let's try that again. Uh, almost? I think we can work with this. Just put that there and then do that. Then we make our little L thingy. And okay, okay, this looks good. First thing I did when I got to the nether was get some gold because I really need some armor. Not that it'll protect me, but Piglins are everywhere, and I need to make them happy. Found a fortress, and there was a chest, so I went to open it, and I guess gold armor isn't enough to make piggies happy. Take my diamond, please! Ugh. Bro, hold still! No! Attempt number eight, I found a fortress, and I made a really big bridge underneath it, which all led to a little blaze farm I made. Bro, this is cancer. Since I can't exactly get down, this time I'm just gonna go over the fortress. Ugh. Okay. Yo, I might actually be able to trade this with some pickies. Well, so I guess this run is pretty tedious actually. The nether really seems difficult when you have one heart, especially if you can't find a fortress. I don't need a bastion. Okay, you know, whatever. I can't find a fortress. Yeah, okay, I don't like that world anyways. Hey, yo, baby zombie in the daytime. Yeah, kill an iron golem, get rid of it. Wait, I should just kill the iron golem. Yo, wait, I should just be killing iron golem for iron. I also found out in this run that boats with chests are awesome because it's basically like a portable inventory for me, provided I'm only in the ocean. Unfortunately, I can't really take that portable storage into the nether. Hey, yo. Back off, skeleton. I have a shield. Wait, frick, frick. Why is there a blaze too? Oh, uh, shoot. Get me out of here. No, stop, stop. No. All right, so attempt 12, I made this weird blaze farm thingy. If I can just hit it through this gap. Oh, okay. That can attack me. I feel like blaze AI got better or something. Eight blaze rods, finally. I'm going to try and get some ender pearls now, which thankfully this fortress spawned like right next to a warp forest. Bro, this farm is slick. Oh, well, I just had to say something. Dude is stuck down there. How do I get down there without him teleporting? Well, you know, he just didn't really teleport. Bye. Okay, I got 16 pearls. Uh, but my only way back is blocked by a wither skeleton, and I could just straight die if I try fighting it. I think I'm just gonna go try and despawn it. I don't really know how many blocks I need to run to make this thing despawn, so better just play safe than- No! You know... I was really actually liking that run. Yo, this next world is like crazy speedrunner mode. 
making a portal first night. And of course, I spawned super high up, so I have to bridge again. This is no good. I'm running out of food and I don't see any fortress. Since unfortunately you can starve in hardcore, I really need food, so I'm gonna have to kill these pigmen. Bro, I swear there was not this many when I punched that one. Where are they coming from? Bro, I can't even kill one. There is just too many. Okay, yeah, that was just scuffed. I was alive for barely over a minute on number 14. My 15th world, however, was where things started to change. For one, I found a much safer and more consistent way of farming blazes. And two, I had the great idea to take wood with me so that I can craft whatever tools I need whenever I need them. Once I had my blaze rods, I ran back and I put them in a chest since this fortress was really far away from my portal. And then I traveled to a warp forest that was somewhat close to the fortress. Back to Enderman farming and they're still bugging out with the crap. Holding ender pearls is like so scary though because like if I throw it I literally die. Bro just let me farm in peace stop just teleport please. Ain't no way another one glitched. What do I even do like is it safe to leave? Okay whatever I have to do something I can't just stay here. Bro, he was watching me for that long and now he teleports? Frick, 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 frick. <gasps> Don't fall on me. Okay. We have enough pearls. Uh, I need to drop them to eat. I don't want to do the thing with the lava bucket. All right, I think I have enough. I can craft all of my eyes of ender. Dude, one heart, 14 eyes of ender, and two hours on hardcore. Easy game. Finally time to get out of the nether. Oh my word. Oh yeah, by the way, this was my spawn. It's just this stupid crag island. This world might have had a trash nether spawn, but I really wanted to see if I could do it. Now that I finally got my eyes of ender and I made it out of the nether, it was time to find the stronghold. However, I knew that if I was in the end and I accidentally looked at one enderman, this run was over. So I decided to pick up some pumpkins on the way and got myself a carved pumpkin hat. I also found out that when you're in third person with a pumpkin on your head, you don't get that stupid overlay so you can actually see. But it was kind of annoying because every time I wanted to attack something like these sheep so that I could make a bed for the night, I had to throw it somewhere and then put it back on when I was finished. It was also at this moment that I sort of realized that if I didn't have an offhand slot, this would like be not even fun. This would be awful. The next day, I traveled and I traveled and finally ended up figuring out where the stronghold was, but by then it was also nighttime. I didn't really have any food, so I dug out a little hole in the ground, killed a cow, and then just ran underground for the night. I also didn't have any torches, so I stuck some food in the furnace and started mining down hoping to find some coal. After eating some torches, I found a cave and I kind of realized that caves are dangerous when you have one heart. I didn't want this world to end by something stupid like a skeleton shooting me in the dark. I really feel like I've got it this time, so like, let's just play it safe and block off the cave. Once the sun rose, I went back up and got some more food since I was completely out, but now that I have a chest and I don't have to run across the world to find this portal, everything I get I can just put into a chest. I also figured I'd need a lot more wood to block off hallways in the stronghold and that sort of thing. And I made a chest so that whenever I needed something, I didn't have to waste my hunger by jumping all the way up my mineshaft. Yes, I found the stronghold. I really have to play it safe. I don't want to die this time. Ooh. Stupid zombies, dude. I'm making another chest. I mean, I'm here. Why not? Oh, frick. Wait, wait, wait. I forgot. I forgot. No, 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 no. Wait, I didn't die in one hit. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Bro, I've never been so scared of a silverfish. What the crap? Okay, where is he? What's he doing? Is he just like standing still? Oh, why did he do that right as I walked down? Okay, I know zombies like banging on doors, so I made fence gates. That should keep me safe, right? Okay, here we go. I don't really know what I'm doing. What I'm gonna do, just block off every hallway maybe? Uh, please don't be like a skeleton. How do you even navigate a fortress safely with only one heart? It's gonna light up everything I can, I guess. Uh, let's make more chests and nothing there. Okay, that's a dead end. Oh gosh. 
I feel like I just have to like cheese every enemy. Like, how do you kill them normally when you only have one heart? If they hit me once, I'm just gonna die. And of course, after I kill these two zombies, more are just gonna spawn in the room ahead. Okay, quickly block everything off. And we'll just go down this way. Hopefully the portal's here. Uh, is there like a mob spawner? What is this? Okay, what is this? I don't even know what I'm looking at. Eventually, I heard silverfish noises through the wall and I ended up finding the portal room. But given the fact that a silverfish almost killed me earlier, I was not going to leave that spawner there and so I just broke it. I also didn't want to risk anything, so I put that lava out underneath the portal and I went back and I got all of my eyes of ender and lit that portal. I wanted to take all of my items with me, so I just made a chest boat and put my items in with it and kept the important ones in my hotbar and I started boating into the portal. Push, 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 push. It's not pushing anymore. Okay, I'll just try and ride it in now. Wait, no. Wait, why did that? Well, that was the worst thing that could have happened. My boat didn't go through the portal and when I got out, it just teleported me. I built over to the island as quick as I could because I didn't know what else to do and it sort of seemed like I was going to be forced to kill the ender dragon with a wooden sword. I started water bucketing up one of the pillars and when I got to the top, I started punching at the cube making sure to break it at max distance. What? Why? No. I did that like a million times when I was testing fighting the ender dragon. Why did I just die this time? I went back into a test world and I had to figure out what happened. So I started swimming up pillars and punching at crystals until I died again. As it turns out, if your head is below the crystal, then when it blows up, it won't kill you. It'll only deal half of a heart. But if your head is above or on the same level as the crystal, when it blows up, it'll do like full damage to you. Well, that sucks. And on top of that, the ender dragon randomly flies into me when I'm trying to climb up the pillars. The ender dragon fight is kind of starting to seem like a game of chance, especially if you're doing it melee only. At this point, I've died a lot of times, so I decided to try and compile everything that I've learned so far. For one, I updated my goals to make beds kind of an optional thing, and I added pumpkins and an adequate amount of food to my goals for getting into the end, because if I went in without those, I would just be toast. After taking a break for a few days, I got back into it again because pretty much all the difficult steps I'd managed to find an easier way to do. Like I knew how to make a speedrunner nether portal now, and I knew how to easily get cooked food. I knew how to make a pretty quick blaze farm to get all the blaze rods. And I farmed for ender pearls twice now, and both times I had a farm that was pretty good and had pretty little chance of dying. I also now had like 45 minutes of running through the stronghold experience with one heart. On top of all that, I was now wary of like every way that I've died before, and so I was looking out for it, like placing a lava bucket on accident, making sure that a skeleton and a blaze weren't right next to each other when I was fighting, checking behind me at all times for wither skeletons, and knowing that glitched endermen will teleport once I run too far away. And most importantly, I knew that if I punched an end crystal and I was below it, then I would be safe. I immediately forgot to record one of my attempts, so I guess we're just not including attempt 16. And on attempt 17, I found out that if you jump off of a two block high fall, you die. On my 18th try, I died because I accidentally let go of shift. And on number 19, I was back to having a stack of eyes of ender and a donkey with a chest this time. After lots of travel, I managed to locate the end fortress and went to grab some items for my donkey like a buffoon. But guys, but guys, but guys, I'm actually like really good at this game. Uh, it's all part of the plan. I did that on purpose. MLG! Oh. Yeah, that's right. I brought a dog this time. Take that, stupid blaze. You're in a hole with a dog. Uh, no blaze rod. Puppy, no! Yo, where are all the blazes at? What? It was at this moment that I decided I'm gonna actually watch speedrunners so I can figure out what the heck I'm even doing wrong.
and through lots of research, I figured out two things. I can trade with piglins to get a potion of fire resistance so that blaze fireballs won't hurt me, which would make farming blazes so much easier. And I can also use the F3 menu to locate nether fortresses, bastions, and find exactly what block buried treasure in the overworld is hidden under. So using my newfound knowledge, I spawned right above a nether fortress. But I was able to trade piglins and got fire resistance potions so that I could go in there and destroy those blazes. Only to have one spawn on me and melee me, because I guess their melee attack isn't fire damage. Attempt 35 had the most amazing nether spawn. Man, I love spawning in midair with nothing around me. But thankfully, thanks to this new trick, I knew exactly which way to build to find the nether fortress. That didn't stop me from being an idiot though, I just fell off an edge and died. The next run, a hoglin was on a tree and somehow ganked me. I don't really know what happened. A skeleton came out of nowhere and killed me, and I just ran into an iron golem and died. Attempt 39, however, I felt immortal. I was in the middle of like so many blazes and just destroyed them with my axe. I managed to get a whole two blaze rods before a skeleton shot me in the back. But all these deaths were not in vain because, again, I learned so much from doing all 39 of those attempts. While yes, I died a lot because I was just dumb and like did dumb stuff, there was also a lot of attempts where I learned something when I died and I was wary of it from that point on. Part of what makes this run so difficult though is that if I make a single mistake, I'll die. So it takes full concentration and complete awareness of my surroundings in order to not die over a period of around two to three hours from my past attempts. I also found out that I could kill two birds with one stone by finding a bastion and trading all the gold to piglins as it would give me heat resistance potions and all of the pearls that I need to go to the end. But spoiler alert, I never found a bastion from this point on. At this point, I spent so much time on this one challenge that on attempt 40, I really felt like I could do it. Even though I saw iron really close to my spawn, I knew from many of my previous attempts that the ocean was actually a way more reliable source of iron, as the sunken ships had so much. And when I explore the ocean, I also have a chest boat so I can store everything that I have on me at all times. That being said, I went ahead and made a crafting table, a boat, and a chest for my chest boat, and then a set of doors just in case I needed to breathe underwater. I pretty quickly found a ruined nether portal and got 19 gold nuggets from it. The other stuff in the chest was kind of useless, and I almost drowned while I was getting the nuggets. I put all my nuggets in my boat, and then I kept exploring. It only took like two minutes, and I found a sunken ship with a bunch of iron in it. And in the same ship, I found a buried treasure map and lots of food. Given the fact starving was actually an issue, I was pretty happy with that. While I was looking for the treasure, I came across this above water drowned fort thingy, and I looted one side, but I wasn't brave enough to try and fight a drowned side, so just went for the treasure. Once I was at the treasure location, I swam around until I was on block 9 nine of the chunk, and then I mined straight down from there and instantly found the treasure. Very helpful, I'm so glad I learned that. I quickly gathered some wood and kind of cut it close to night and crafted an iron pickaxe because I had a ton of iron to spare at this point. I thought I remembered seeing a magma ravine on my way to that island, so I backtracked and it was a bust. Ooh, obsidian. Okay, this is a magma ravine, right? Right? It wasn't. But I did find a mushroom island. Hey yo, this is some weird milk. Portal! Wait, I can fix this. I have the obsidian. Guess I don't even need lava. Yo, curse of binding gold pants. Heck yeah. Fix that. And we're ready to go to the nether. Ah, oh, frick. I'm not getting anything from my boat tonight. So I went into the nether with nothing. Except for my curse of binding pants. Hmm. Oh, warp forest. I think I actually got a good spawn for once. Since I had some time to kill before it was daytime again, I built a little fort around my portal with the blocks I could get from the nether. Well, this is a hazard. What the? Okay. Bro, are they like all under here or something? How am I supposed to get my stuff? <laughs> Okay, that didn't take long. I feel like I'm pretty set on exploring the nether with this loot, so long as I don't get touched. It took me a bit, but eventually I did narrow down the direction of the nearest nether fortress, and I was actually pretty lucky because that was like the only direction that actually had terrain for me to explore on. <gasps> Yo, look at that! It's a fortress! 
I have to mine through the wall. No! I needed to despawn that blaze anyway, so I ran back to my portal, grabbed some stuff, and set up camp right here. Hindsight, probably not the safest door. I blocked off every hallway I wasn't exploring, so I didn't get ganked by some wither skeleton or skeleton or whatever. Hey, wait, gotta block that off. Gotta go back so I can get some wood to set up over here. Uh, oh, 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 oh. <sighs> I never wanna see a skeleton again. I went back to my portal and I got enough iron for a shield and a sword, brought it back to my first base in the fortress, and then started trading some gold to a piglin. You know, 24 gold for three pearls and a fire resistance potion. This economy is whack. I took my potion and iron to the chest next to the blaze and got ready to fight. Only one potion, so we've only got three minutes to do this. And my potion's running out. Well, we got four. <sighs> Guess it's back to the old farm. As soon as I got seven blaze rods, I was out of there. But it was at this point in the run that I completely stopped playing. It had been almost 20 attempts since I got this far, which was hours and hours of playtime. Over the course of the next few days, I just couldn't get myself to continue the run. And unfortunately, the amount of progress I made alongside the three days of it just eating at the back of my mind caused me to break a very crucial rule, not getting attached to my runs. The whole reason I'm able to get so far in each one of my runs and then not even think twice when I die and just start a new world is because I go into each world with the expectation that I am gonna die and whatever I die from will just help me do better in my next world. But now that I had such high hopes for attempt 40, dying now became a nightmare and I didn't know how it would affect my drive to do future runs. So after those three days, I used the attachment to the best of my abilities and devised a completely new way to kill the ender dragon that relied less on chance to make me feel better. Because obviously if I can get enough blaze rods, I can get to the end again, right? All right, Enderman, you're next. Okay, so I actually found out this makes mobs spawn more. So I'm just going to do this and wait here a moment. Uh, bro? Bro, I didn't do anything. Go away. Thank you. Oh no. Why does the nether have to be like this? I will wait here patiently until you despawn. Okay, 12 pearls. Pretty good. I think I'm just gonna get like two more to be on the safe side. We've got a problem. There are two glitched gendermen down there. Two of them. Piggy, are you trying to get hurt? Why are you like this? Thank you. Thank you, Piggy. Uh, what do I do? Uh, if I die right here, it's Microsoft's fault. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, 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 I think we're good. Ugh. Bro, I'm actually dying right now. One pearl, two pearls, okay, whatever. I think we're good to go. That was unpleasant. All right, I am out of the nether. Whoa, I guess he's still doing his thing over there. Time to look for the fortress. Uh, is it worth it? Probably. Ah, there was like two of them in there. After grabbing all my stuff from the nether, I mined some wood for the road and I started looking for the stronghold. Huh, well, I guess I passed it, but we're back to the mushroom island. I found the general area and started trying to find the portal with the F3 menu, but it wasn't really working out too well. Once it started getting dark, I realized I wasted too much time trying to find the portal room. And since I was pretty sure Drowned had already spawned around me, I just went back to the mushroom island for the night. Look at all that cobblestone. Did you know that mobs don't spawn on mycelium so the mushroom island is safe? You know, not having a bed isn't too bad, I guess, but like, I don't know what to do with myself right now. So I'm just gonna like walk around, I guess. Yo, the moon is pretty. Dance, dance. Ooh, ooh! I totally forgot phantoms existed. All right, lesson learned. 
mushroom islands aren't safe anymore. When I got back to the place where the stronghold was, I threw a pearl and tried using another strategy I learned to locate where the entry staircase is. Uh, well, no more throwing pearls. That was the second one to break. I made a small cave in the water right in the middle of the chunk that I thought it would be on, and I started putting my supplies in there. I also mined the coal vein right next to it because I figured I could use it for torches later, and I went up and grabbed most of the stuff from my boat. By the time I got everything down there, it was night, so I blocked off the door and then started mining down. Well, that's bedrock, not the entry staircase. I spent the entire next day mining logs for my new strategy, and then brought it all down to my underwater base. With one chunk down, I just decided I would mine down in another chunk. Ugh, of course it's bedrock again. After another full day of mining wood, I brought it all back to the base and repeated the process yet again. If there's one thing at least that was nice about all this, I did get a lot of extra iron. Numbers, help me. <gasps> Finally! But I think I'm gonna need to mine a safer way down. All right, so I found the wall and mine down, but this room's still pretty dark. Um, how to do this? Uh, okay, we're good. Don't see anything. I hear a spider. I'm just gonna block off these with as little blocks as possible. But actually, I think skeletons can shoot me through those. Okay, that should be good, I think. I went back up to the surface, and today was the most profitable wood gathering day I've gotten so far. All right, two stacks, and like almost two more stacks, and my bucket and some cobble. Woo! What? Did I literally just almost die to that? Uh, but we're good, we're alive. To this day, I have never been so happy after being jump scared. I had to go all the way down the stairs to bring my stuff to the stronghold, and once I got two items there, I had to go all the way back up. Since food was kind of an issue, I just brought down what I needed and then started clearing the area so that I could find the portal room. Well, that's a dead end. Um, iron boots, all right. Guess I'll take some of that. Uh, don't like that. Okay, I guess not too bad. Yo. Iron boots. All right, so two sets of iron boots. No enemy. Silverfish? Oh, well, that was fast. I replaced one of the doors with fences so I could see what spawned down that really long dark hallway. And I mined a hole in the ground in the wall so I could kill the two zombies that were down there. After making a few more trips up and down my staircase, I brought a few more items down there and I went to block off the silverfish room. Just gonna mine in through the top again so that I don't have to deal with the spawner. Oh boy, not this again. Yeah, I'm out of here. Uh, what do I do? Oh, okay, he just went in the block. Get rigged. Once I got in, I mined the spawner and I set up camp right next to the portal. Since I wasn't really planning on going in quite yet, I set up a chest for later so I can hold all my items next to the portal. I also went ahead and lit the portal, which was my second time doing so in this challenge. I need creepers, so I think I'm also going to make this hallway spawn mobs, but I just want to make sure there's no mobs in here before I do that. Okay, I'll probably break that. Wait, actually I needed paper for fireworks too, so this is perfect. Grab that for later. Okay, so I think just one spawning hallway is working out pretty well, but still no creepers. You know, I know I don't really need to equip this tunic, but if I can loot a full set of armor, that'd be kind of funny. I set the render distance to two again to see if that would spawn more enemies and unloaded the chunk to try and maybe despawn those enemies. And it kind of took a while and I just wasn't getting any creepers. Just skeletons and zombies and skeletons. So I mined out this little area inside the prison to hopefully spawn creepers faster. After getting about 8 gunpowder, I figured that was probably good and started bringing the rest of my items down to my chest, and then crafted all of my fireworks. I also realized I've had this world for 4.5 hours and I haven't slept once, so I made a bed. I was planning on looking for a pumpkin since the last thing I needed before I entered the end was a pumpkin, and I figured I was far enough in the game I should really just have a bed to skip night at this point, so that's what I did. In the morning, I immediately set out and went to the same shore that I've been mining all the trees from, and placed a door just so I knew generally which way led back to my stronghold. I could have just like looked at the coordinates and written them down or something, but I kind of didn't even think about that until I already left, so whatever is what we're doing. <gasps> Ooh, I want to loot that, but I don't need it. Hey, finally a plains. I've been boating for so long. Let's just crank up our render distance and... I don't see any pumpkins. 
The next morning, I found pumpkins, and then I went back to my boat and rowed all the way back with this guy chasing me, I guess. It's kind of crazy that I can row my boat as fast as a dolphin can swim. Hey, there's my door. When I got back to the stronghold, I put some of my items in the chest and went to bed for the night. I lied when I said that pumpkins were the last thing I needed. I also needed food. And you know, mushroom milk was kind of weird, and their island wasn't actually as safe as I thought, so... From that day forth, it was known as Meat Island. I got back home and tried mining some coal where that old coal vein was, and then... No, no, no! Stop! I can't outrun it! Bro, I think that broke like literally every torch I placed all the way down. I was trying to follow it and place all the torches that I had in my inventory because I realized if a mop spawns in my mine shaft, I probably could actually die and lose the entire run. Alright, so after placing all those torches back, we were safe. And I crafted a bunch of furnaces so I could quickly cook all of my meat. Beef, 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 beef. And then I brought all the items I wanted to take right next to the end portal. Again, this stuff makes me anxious every time, so I just blocked it off. And then I threw everything in the chest one after another into the portal. I gave it a quick double check just to make sure nothing fell at the bottom, grabbed a chest, and went into the end. Immediately, I placed the chest and just shoved all the items I had into it because I didn't want them to despawn. And I also knew the ender dragon would probably be targeting me soon, so I had to go really quick. Wait, already? Oh, come on. Shoot your stupid fireball. Okay, go, 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 go. Wait, is he targeting me again? Nope. I built almost two full stacks of blocks out just to make sure the Ender Dragon couldn't target me. And then I made a chest so that I could bring some stuff out and have more safe storage out here. Since I knew I was going to be building with a lot of blocks, I needed somewhere safe to go that wasn't going to get dive bombed by the Ender Dragon. A few stacks of logs, a pumpkin, my iron, and half my food later, I was ready to start building this bridge. Great. 128 blocks later, I have to run back. Time skip. I'm a half an hour older, and the islands are finally in my sights. I cranked up my render distance again so I could look for an end city, and as soon as I found it, I made yet another bridge. Somehow I had like the perfect amount of wood, aside from the one stack of wood I left in my chest on the spawn point, so I was glad I didn't have to eat into that. Once I got to the end city, thankfully I found a boat, and I tried building up to it, but pretty quickly realized my pickaxe was going to break before I had enough blocks to do this, so I got a new pickaxe and I built up to the boat. There was a little bit of RNG to getting these, but it was probably going to be fine. Okay, Shulker's right above me. But mind this block, I should teleport him. Alright, we're good. Wait, no, 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 he spawned over there. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Uh, I think we're safe. Here, let me try and get the Elytra. Can't really equip any of those. Wait, what? How long was that floating around? What the heck? Bro, I could have looted a full armor set, but I need the pumpkin on my head. Alright, finally getting this Elytra, getting rid of that chest plate. Come on. Okay, there we go. Bro, managing these items is so annoying. Okay, I just gotta go now. Yo, we got it. We got Elytra. Dude, I am so happy. But I still have to kill the Ender Dragon, and I really, really don't want to die now. This is like literally seven hours into the world with one heart on hardcore. This is so stressful. Okay, we're back. Just gotta get this so I can go up. Wait, what the Dude, I've been back here for like two seconds. He almost like flew into me already. Okay. Bro, now you're shooting a fireball at me too? I feel like this guy is being so aggressive. Okay, I'm just gonna go up this way. Please let me get this. Please let me get this. Okay. Stop. Oh my gosh. Alright, I can get it this time. I can't use the elytra to get up to these because I'll just end up dying if I do that. The safest way is punching them like this. Alright. One down. I think there's like one more. Quick, 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 quick. Doesn't look like he's coming. Okay, okay. I think we're good this time. On to Elytra. That's all I needed. Okay, grabbing my fireworks, and it is Elytra time. Only got 22 left, but I'm pretty sure we can get all these. 
Okay. We're up here. Don't target me. He's not coming. Okay, we're good. We're good. Get this. Hey, it's working! Okay, I just gotta get the rest this way and we're good. Bruh. Alright, I know I'm gonna get hungry. I don't want to be sitting at half a heart, so I'm just gonna jump around until I can eat. After I put away my elytra, because I feel like this is just gonna be a repeat of shoving my head in the ceiling. Alright, he's pretty far away. This is pretty good. Wait, where is he? Oh shoot, he's right behind me. Uh, okay, I thought he was flying toward me for a second. Oh, now he's flying toward me. Dude, he's getting so aggressive. Stop. Nah, that's totally gonna miss. Yeah, that missed. Okay, getting away. Wait, is he chasing me? He's literally chasing me. Bro, stop. He shot like two in a row there. The wiki was not lying when it said he gets more aggressive when there's less crystals. Okay. Well, I can't really see him. Ah, he's literally right there! Okay, just let me get on there. Okay, one more. Let's get over here. He's literally- Okay, he keeps doing that. Why is he chasing me so much? Just let me land. Okay, he's in the middle. He can't get me. He can't possibly get me. Unless he's flying underneath me right now. Shoot, 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 shoot. Go, 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 go. Come on, come on. Off of here. <sighs> okay, I really thought I was going to die on that last one. But we don't need fireworks anymore. I'm gonna craft a sword so we can actually kill this thing. And. Bro, he's right above me again. <gasps> oh my word. What is with this guy? Okay, going back around, getting some food, and we're ready to fight this thing for real. Just dodge these things. Okay, go, 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 go. As long as he doesn't random hit me down here, we should be fine. Bro, what? Five times? He's supposed to stay. What the heck? Alright, we go again. Stay this time. Bro. Bro. Okay, I think my Ender Dragon is glitched. Oh well. If this is one that I don't mess up, this should be easy. Two times? Bro, how long has it been? I've been attacking this thing for so long. I feel like one of these times he's just gonna randomly hit me. Gotta be it. What? I can't hit him. Bro, what was that? He literally just reverted to cheating, I guess. Oh shoot, I totally missed it. Dude, I had it every single time and I missed it just this one time. Okay, here we go. Am I finally done with this? Yes! Oh my gosh. Dude, that took so long. Seven hours and 40 minutes? Holy crap. I... I am ready for this to be over. I really didn't want to do another world. Honestly, it's a fun challenge, but seven and a half hours, that was just stress, dude. That was so stressful. We got it though. The optimal gear. Pumpkin head, elytra, curse of binding gold pants and iron boots. Wait, what? Uh, all right, I think I bugged the game out. Yeah, I definitely bugged the game out. But you know, I did hit the portal, so I'm counting that as a win. Well, finally, we defeated the Ender Dragon, and we did it with one heart and one inventory slot. Let me know if you guys think this challenge is harder than Hardcore RLCraft. Do you think there's a way to make Minecraft even harder than this without making it a horrible experience? Nah, that would be too difficult. 
Anyways, I usually make tutorials to help new players in the RL Craft community, but I can definitely make more content like this if it gets a lot of likes, and if people subscribe just to see more, then I'll definitely make more. Your viewership and support makes the hours that I spend editing this 481 gigs on my hard drive all worth it in my opinion. In fact, the entire reason that I made this video in the first place is because of the overwhelmingly positive response to my last one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.